Well, <laughs> God bless my wife. She reminded me to put my bifocals in my pocket. We don't got no light here, huh? Well, I'm certainly very happy to be here. Not that I haven't taken my life in my hands to get here. And I know perfectly well that Phil Hoff is going to get up and leave because he has heard what he thinks is going to be my speech tonight. Phil, it ain't the same speech. It simply begins the same way. May I say then that I did indeed take my life in my hands to get here tonight. I have a new car, automobile. New to me, that is. God knows a college professor never can afford a really new car. He has to take the second-hand leftovers. <laughs> Quel dommage. Quel plaisir, indeed. Uh, Phil, when you make out the next budget, you might remember those words about college professors' salaries. <laughs> <laughs> Recently, my wife and I were in Europe, where we went blindly gung-ho <laughs> over European cars. And simple folk that we are, we got one. Well, you know the rest of that story. You know, little things kept going wrong, minor things. You know, like the car wouldn't go. <laughs> Or the window on my side wouldn't roll down. Now, if you analyze that, it becomes a rather complicated situation for a man like me with a post-nasal drip. <laughs> aiming, aiming to the right, alas, involves one's wife. You know, Kim, that way. Who is long suffering enough, God knows, without this added burden of constant dodging? As a matter of fact, my wife rather enjoyed that little car, save for her reservations about the bucket seats. Francis, she said to me, these bucket seats are just peachy. But it ain't everybody's bucket fits there. <laughs> well, good heavens, I didn't mean to break you up that much. <laughs> well, at, at, at least here I am. And let us hope that I get home again. I have miles to go before I sleep and hope not to do so in the process. <laughs> well, now let's get serious. In this, uh, really let's get serious. In this election year, it seems fitting to turn our attention to the time-honored and historical, indeed hysterical, machinations of office-seeking. The citizens of my native state of Vermont are almost as illogical and idiotic as the citizens of any other state during their periodic political seizures. <laughs> Vermont, however, as you know, I trust most of you, is a law unto itself. To understand Vermont, it is extremely useful to have been born there. Some, indeed, actually are born there. <laughs> there is, indeed, little basis in fact in this rumor that native Vermonters simply appear full-blown from the depths 
of maple sugar houses or cow sheds. <laughs> and another rumor, another rumor that there are more cows than people in Vermont is fast losing ground. We people are steadily gaining <laughs> on the cows. Of course, the summer people are helping. <laughs> albeit, albeit a visit to some of our summer beaches might tend to confuse the count. What with topless bathing suits and all that other stuff. <laughs> Now then, some indeed are born in Vermont. Some are born in Vermont. Some reach Vermont through accident or marriage or both. Well, now, uh, come, not necessarily in that order. All right, now, very, let, let us return to elections, which I'm sure my dear friend Governor Hoff will be happy to have me return to. And a dear friend of mine who once ran for a seat on the school board in the small northeastern Vermont town of Seton's Falls, he was an astute man, as evidenced by this modest little anecdote. Walter and I were once standing in a wide open field watching a high and fast moving jet plane scream overhead. And I said to Walter, Walter, how would you like to be up there with that pilot? And Walter turned to me and said, Francis, I'd a hell of a lot rather be up there with him than without him. <laughs> I'm stupid, ain't it? Walter told me, Walter told me once about a political rally, rally he had attended, and his story, his version of it, went something like this. Well, Francis, I got there and I sat down, and this other fellow was talking. Well, so he went on, and on, and on, and pretty soon, folks, commenced to leave. First one by one, then two by two, and finally family by family. And finally I was the on, only one left in that hall. When that speaker, I believe he was running beside judge, wound up. And he come down and shook my hand, and he says to me, I am honored that you set me out. May I ask why? And I said to him, my friend, I had to. I am the next speaker. <laughs> Now then, my friends, as we come upon the special situation in hand, my friend Walter is addressing the annual town meeting, hoping to gain a seat on the school board. The casting of ballots is imminent. The issues, as usual, are totally confused. And partisanship is, is at white heat. Now, I can present this plea for election only in my native tongue, in which I now seek refuge. <clears throat> Mr. Moderator, fellow uh, constituents, fellow citizens of this, our lovely and forward-looking settlement of Seton's Falls, and when I say fellow, Citizens, 
I include as well the uh, lady citizens. I rise to my feet to address you because I have been urged, indeed uh, drafted, by no fewer than seven, and I repeat seven, of my fellow townsmen to offer myself in all humility as a candidate for the seat on the school board left vacant by the untimely passing of our beloved fellow citizen, Fanny W. Seaton, <laughs> my friend. What a seat she has left. <laughs> what a seat she has left uh, to be filled. Who amongst us can truly replace that magnificent Fanny? <laughs> great, great, great granddaughter of the founding father of our glorious settlement of Seton Falls, Colonel Eaton Seton. <laughs> the memory, the memory of that great, indeed big woman will go down in our history forevermore. During her long and devoted service on our school board, she did much to expand our justly <laughs> proud seat of learning, Seton Academy. But now, fellow citizens, Fanny has been gathered, and we are faced with a replacement to be duly elected and are freely chosen by you, my fellow voters. And I, after considerable coercion and soul-searching, offer myself, not to gain personal glory, but to serve you as your servant, to fill Fanny's shoes. <laughs> they was somewhat large, too. <laughs> now I am aware that another, another also seeks this high office, and you know to who I refer, Eldon Baca. <laughs> Fellow constituents, we all know Eldon, a nice boy, possibly. <laughs> but still and all a boy, not a day over 50. <laughs> Where is Eldon going to draw from for the wisdom and experience demanded for this solemn and uh, sacred uh, trust? I'll tell you, fellow voters, nowhere. <laughs> Friends, to use the immortal words of that great American and that great Vermonter, Calvin Coolidge, and I quote, let us look at the record. Eldon Barker graduated from our beloved Seton Academy 29 years ago, give or take a year or two. May I point out and let us note, Gesundheit. <laughs> May I point out and let us note that his father was on the school board at the time. Yes, Eldon did graduate from Seton Academy. Just, just barely. I recall old Prof Pierce of blessed memory saying to Eldon one time, by Godfrey Eldon, you are stupid. <laughs> and, friends, I recall Eldon's answer. If you think I'm stupid, you should see my sister Cora. <laughs> stupid 
Why, she's bent way over. I like that. Now, fellow citizens, is that the kind of man we need on our school board? I need hardly go into Eldon's background. For one thing, he ain't got none. <laughs> we all remember Eldon's father, a disgrace to our beloved community. In later years, he not only took to run-in nights down to St. Johnsbury, <laughs> but he also took up with John Barleycorn. In other words, friends, are the demon a rum? So much so that he got an alcoholic throat. He used to... <laughs> Thank you. He used to complain of his sore throat. He used to complain of his sore throat to his long-suffering wife. And she said once, well, Eldon, I don't wonder your throat hurts you. After all, three farms have gone down that throat. <laughs> Friends call to mind some of them hair-brained business ventures of his. Was he always above board? Recall that time he started the real estate business. He looked around the spell for an office, and he finally went to Bert Higgins at the savings bank building. And that took him right upstairs, and the bank building says, Now, how's this for an office? And old man Baca complained some of the rent. And Bert says, Well, we got to be kind of careful. Who we rent this space out to, it sets exactly over our big vault, squarely squarely over our big vault. Well, old man Baca took it anyways. And Bert come up after Eldon's father got himself sort of settled in. And he see that old man Baca had moved everything around. The desk and the chair was moved so that they was plumb over that vault below stairs. He also noted that there was this sign painted on the door. Eldon Baca, Senior, Real Estate. Assets over six billion dollars. <laughs> like I say, like I say, Sort of misleading. <laughs> Eldon Barker's father finally passed away due to stoppage of the heart. By then, his first wife had died of mortification. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> And Eldon's father had married the hired girl. I suppose you all know why. <laughs> Head to <laughs> the old leecher. <laughs> the very day before he died, the Reverend Zero Becklin come to see him. And there the old fool sat propped up in his Morris chair, thumbing through, of all things, the Bible. And Reverend Becklin said, Well, Mr. Barker, 
Just what are you doing with the book of holy writ? You was never set foot in the Lord's house. An old man Barker looked up to him and said, I'm just a looking for loopholes. <laughs> Now, my friends, now, my friends, that, that man's son wants to run, wants to run for the school board. What? That good-for-nothing? That lame-brained booby? Now, I want you all should know that I got nothing personal to say about Elvin. <laughs> I say, luck. let's not get into no personalities. <laughs> but we all know the ornery sort of mudhead Eldon is. Awful small potatoes and few in a hill. <laughs> we all know how he lives, him and that woman of his. Godfrey mighty. <laughs> Doc Dustin... Doc Dustin told me once about Eldon's claiming to be terrible sick. Something wrong with his off foot, he said. Well, sir, Doc Dustin went down into that hard wallow of Eldon's, and he took off Eldon's shoe. And the doc took one look and says to Eldon, Eldon, I'll warrant you that that is the dirtiest foot in Orleans County. And Eldon said, oh, you think so, do you? <laughs> Just supposing you take off the other shoe. <laughs> now, now, fellow voters, fellow citizens, besides all that, we all know that him and that woman of his don't get on good together, neither. I was down there one time when they was having one of them ruckuses of theirs. And after some threshing around near the front stoop, Eldon just picked her up uh, bodily and threw her right off up in under the eaves. And she fell out to the ground. <laughs> and Eldon says that. Well, I'm through baby and you. <laughs> and my friends, my friends, what them folks eat, what them folks eat, the necks and gizzards off the fowls. I was down there once come mealtime, and there they sat, eating a tripe. Tripe. Well, Eldon asked me how I liked a tripe. And I says, Eldon, I don't like a tripe. <laughs> On my side of town, we don't eat our critters that close. <laughs> Fellow voters, Fellow constituents, I ask you again, is that the kind of man we want on the school board? Let us sound a loud and affirmative nay. Let us further examine the record. Eldon Barker claims the right to a seat on the school board for the rather questionable reason that his father had one. A seat, that is, on the board. And the record shows that this town gained absolutely nothing from that scoundrel's incumbency. And what did the incumbent gain from sitting on that board? Is it just coincident? Just coincident that at this self-same time he bought his very first 
mechanical manure spreader. <laughs> My fellow constituents, let us face the facts squarely. Them greedy hands of his was a dipping into the public a till. <laughs> Now, friends, I have said that I do not wish to bring personalities into this campaign, aside from pointing out that my distinguished opponent is a stupid, <laughs> dim-witted lummox who don't know enough to count up to 20 without he has his shoes and socks off, <laughs> and who is so tight so tight that he would try out a mouse for the fat. <laughs> I'll say no more on this issue, burning though it be. Now, I see that there is a question from the floor. A question from the floor. Would you repeat that, sir? Oh, yes, yes. How do I stand on stream pollution? <laughs> Friend, let me counter by asking you a question. What the hell has that got to do with the school board? <laughs> uh, what did you say? Well, now you may be right. The school board does indeed have something to say about the location of the school privies. <laughs> You cheater, you. <laughs> Let me say, however, and paint in on a broader canvas, that this lovely state of Vermont must set up strong measures to deter, to deter the polluters of our lovely rivers streams, and lakes, we must acquire strong and effective uh, detergents. That isn't a very good one, is it? <laughs> I see now that another hand has gone up. Oh, yes, madam. Madam, that is a good uh, question, and I am happy for the opportunity to answer that a question. Madam, as you reach the hall, it's the second door on your right. <laughs> yes, yes indeed, friends. A timely question. I only hope that I answered it in time. <laughs> but now, fellow voters, the time has come for me to sing my own praises, uh, <coughs> to uh, defend my own uh, candid, <coughs> to talk about me. <coughs> As each and every one of you knows, I will come to this office with commitments to no man and very few women. <laughs> My friends, I am an independent. Remember in our recent uh, Democratic Convention, I can say that I have signed the oath. <laughs> yes, I have signed the pledge. Not once, but many times. <laughs> Only last night as I got home from St. Johnsbury, my wife said to me with tears streaming down her lovely uh, green cheeks, I, I, I mean out of her lovely green eyes, Francis, you independent. <laughs> Friends, friends, you know my stand on education. 
I am Thor, education. I well recall the time my neighbor's daughter come home from the State University during her first vacation as a first year student. I found her in the barn with her father, helping him clean out the horse shed. And I turned to her father and I said, Will, college ain't hurt Laura a bit. <laughs> yes, fellow townsmen, I am for education. Let me give you another example of my thinking on this matter, as opposed to that of my worthy opponent. During the last public vote in our fair community, on raising certain modest sums to install certain modern equipment in our beloved uh, Seton Academy, especially urinals in the boys' basement. <laughs> My worthy opponent voted against, against such action. And I asked him why and he admitted to me that he didn't know what there was. <laughs> friends, friends didn't know what they was. Fellow citizens, go back in your memories and you will recall that I not only championed the cause of them conveniences, it is a matter of public record that I personally went out of pocket to ensure not only the installation of urinals, but an equitable, an equitable number of arsenals as well. <laughs> the first named, the first named a stand-in tribute to looking forward and, and there they both stand, or sat to this day, white and majestic. <laughs> and let me point out, still in working order. <laughs> now I have said that I am an independent, owing nothing to nobody. However, you all recall that occasion when some young whippersnap from down country come up to our county seat to sell us one of them voting machines with all the little doodads on it. You well remember how he asked me from the throng gathered there to step forwards and demonstrate how she worked. And fearful as I was of that unnatural device, I did. And this young fellow plucked down some of them little levers and says to me, now you fetch that main prank down to the right and you will have voted the straight a Republican ticket, which I did. Then he plopped down some other of them little levers and said, now you fetch down that main crank again and you will have voted the straight a democratic ticket, which I did not do. <laughs> I may be independent, but I'm still a Vermonter. <laughs> I turned to that young man and I said, young man, I wouldn't do that, even in fun. <laughs> Out yonder window stands a cedar post. I'd vote for that, if it was Republican. <laughs> now you all know that I subscribe to the immortal words of our great 
American and that great Vermonter, Calvin Coolidge, make do. Do without. Eat it up. <laughs> or can it? <laughs> like my friends, like Calvin Coolidge, I stand before you, economy-minded, with my eye ever to the pulse of the public purse puckering string. Some public officials beyond the borders of our fair state don't always appreciate how we Vermonters husband the federal funds. Like that time our present, our present postmaster was appointed, and again, you know to who I refer, Owen Deed, at the end of the first month of Owen's incumbency, he got a letter from the U.S. Postmaster asking why no mail had gone out from Seton's Falls. Owen D. wrote back the truth, the truth. He wrote, the bag ain't full yet. <laughs> Like I say, economy-minded. <laughs> Friends, to that end, I should like to present my thinking on this matter of rebuilding Seton Academy. You weren't kidding. <laughs> Friends, it is encumbering upon us to rebuild Seton Academy since last April the North Wing fell down. I propose the following program based not only on deep study, but with an eye to saving the taxpayer's dollar. First, I propose that we build the new building on the very site of the old building. I'm sorry. <laughs> Throw up. Sorry. I propose, firstly, that we build the new building on the very site of the old building. Secondly, I propose that we use the building materials took from the old building. Thirdly, I propose that we build the new building before the old building is torn down. <laughs> I ask for your votes, and I thank you. 